bear with. What if the antidote to fast fashion is our obsession with tattoos? Good morning. As you can hopefully tell, I'm not in my usual habitat. I've actually been staying at my friend Rosianna's house because I booked a tattoo <laughs> to happen today. This little arm is getting all inked um, and I was very scared that I was going to miss my train. The volume of train strikes and delayed trains <laughs> in this economy did not make me confident that I was going to get there on time on the day. So I stayed over in London the night before. And of course, while I was here, I tripped and fell into a Waterstones and I picked up a book about the history of tattooing. And then I spent all of last night overthinking my life choices, ruminating on the contrast in my world and my life between fast fashion, trend cycles, disposable culture, and the weird permanence of tattoos and how they're actually gaining prevalence in the world. So I thought I'd take you with me today to the tattoo studio. From her Instagram story, it would seem that my tattoo artist, Emily, has already been up last night designing my tattoo, so I'm so freaking excited. So join me for a day of hanging out in London, wringing out your life decisions and overthinking them until you are but a limp little cloth and you don't want to think ever again. On a lot of levels, I totally get people's hesitation with tattoos. I mean, why, how, how could you even begin to pick something that is an image that you didn't even draw and be able to predict whether future you will still like it? And I don't think that people who get loads of tattoos are more blasé in other parts of their life. And on the other side of the spectrum, I don't think they know themselves better than most people. I think it's actually their relationship to regret as a concept. I feel like as I've been more daring and as I've allowed myself to get more tattoos, it's not that I have this great vision for what my personal style is gonna be in my 40s or my 50s. It's more that I'm starting to trust that I have the emotional capacity to be able to handle it if I do regret it and like the grace to understand my younger self as I get older. Like I don't wish to be dramatically negative or nihilistic, but I am about to turn 34 and for better for worse, I believe that I am halfway through my life. You know, a lot of my grandparents died around the age of 70 or 75. It's not unusual to do that. And I think anything after that is like a massive bonus and basically just a medical miracle. So if I think, right, I'm halfway through my life, I know that I'm only half as wise as I'm gonna be when I'm in my 70s. But that doesn't mean I'm not allowed to make decisions or have taste or decorate the wallpaper in the home that I'm living in just because I guess in the future I'll be able to make a better decision. I can't wait for that future self. I don't think she'd want me to wait. Okay, we're back home in the morning and it's time to give it a proper wash. Fragrance and colour and joy free soap. We've got some cruelty free cocoa butter for afterwards. It is only looking a tiny bit irritated, which is really impressive. I gave it a good wash and moisturise yesterday as well and it's only a tiny bit raised. What was really, really funny <laughs> was that when Emily had done it, she was like, I noticed that there was a slight bit of scar tissue on you. Um, I don't know if you know about that or where it came from. And then she pointed to it. I don't know if you can see that. She pointed to it. And I was like, where the hell have I got scar tissue on my arm for? I haven't had an injury. BCG. <laughs> If you were a teenager in the noughties in Britain, you will immediately know what I mean. But the BCG jab was something that every kid in Britain had to have for a while. And in my school, <laughs> in commentary, it was pretty brutal. When you have a tattoo, it gets really, really warm. <laughs> and then when you put cold on it, it's like, oh, that whole layer of skin is just really burning a little bit. But like, I don't know, it's just kind of warm. Anyway, there was a thing in my school that was kind of brutal, and which I fully participated in and at the time really enjoyed. <laughs> because I was no less of a feral teenager than the rest of them, was that when we all got our jabs, everybody knew that everybody was tender in the same spot and everybody had the same really visible blue plaster on. So you just walk through the corridors <laughs> and if you saw someone you vaguely knew or didn't even really know that well, you'd go up to them and give them a massive punch on the arm and shout BCG really loud and everyone would go, oh, it was like being kicked in the nuts but medicinal vaccination edition. But you can see there's still a little bit of ink coming out there. But yeah, it was so funny because I haven't thought about that scar for ages. It's scars because 
everybody was punching each other. So if it was like every time it tried to heal during the week, somebody would punch you and the pus would just come out and it would just like the wound would get worse. I laugh at it like it's a fond memory, which I don't know if that says more about me or about my school. <laughs> this is actually my sixth tattoo ever and it's not quite finished. I'm gonna go back and have it shaded a lot more. So I think I'm kind of practiced at cleaning and healing these things, but then I also have to not get too comfortable and make sure I am actually being vigilant about it. So yes, to carry on from what I was saying in London, I understand <laughs> that tattoos are permanent, but I think I'm coming from a place of permanence no longer scares me in the same way. And it also makes me think a lot about like the fact that tattoos are kind of a purchase and they have a labour value behind them and how differently we all act, I think, around tattoos in a way that it's like really interesting that we're capable of that, like that I'm capable of that, that everybody is. And it feels like a completely different consumer labourer relationship than anything else that I like buy or do. So for example, with fast fashion, you're paying a very low value for an item that is much less than perhaps the hourly rate that you would accept for yourself. And you're buying something that's been completely mass produced, even though the labour to make each item is <laughs> kind of the same. It feels like something that's been replicated a lot and therefore has less value. Whereas with a tattoo, you're commissioning a real person that you're, you've either met or you're going to meet to make you a piece of art that is collaborative. Like it's specific to you, but it's also specific to them. And it's like the only time that most people who aren't aristocracy get to commission art and participate in it and support an artist in this way that previously was only available to very, very you and it feels like fast fashion and commissioning pieces of clothes or making your own feels just so removed and far away and impossible but when i think about the price of tattoos and how willing people are to save up for them and savor them and really think about them it makes me feel like it could be possible like tattoos are also the antidote to fast fashion because they're a permanent style decision like this the me and this <laughs> we're gonna be here forever you three and maybe like four i kind of want to add a fourth anyway the artist isn't designing with trends in mind for you this isn't something that is disposable uh, but it's also something that's quite mainstream to have now it's quite normal for people to have tattoos and they're often the same price if not more expensive than an ethically made clothing item and i just think that's so interesting not only is it the power of commissioning i think but it's also the power of like actually having to sit with the artist while they do it and you're really close to them like emily was like on my shoulder for most of this like we were sharing the same breath and it's really impossible to not see how much goes in to making that tattoo and there's also like a big culture of tipping which i know is really normal in the us with like uh, any other kind of item and maybe in your country it's, it's really normal in the uk we don't tip that much it's not really a tipping culture but it, when it comes to tattoos it's a huge tipping culture fascinating it's also something where there's a lot more local labor involved like it's not unusual for you to live in the same economy as the person that you're paying you, you either live in the same town or the same city or at least the same country as that person so there's no way for a middleman to artificially deflate the price or fiddle with the economies of scale so you're much more willing to pay less and not watch the worker suffer or not get paid fairly it was so interesting chatting with rosiana the night before i got the tattoo because we were talking about her tattoos and she loves getting flash tattoos which is if you don't know is when uh, an artist won't take a commission or a prompt from a person. They will just draw what they really wanna draw and what they love to tattoo. And then they put it up for you to pick and have on your body, which I think was a lot more common um, like 50 years ago. Like people would just walk into a tattoo shop and look through somebody's books and pick what they wanted. But she really likes doing that because she feels like it gives the artists complete free reign. And like you get to truly see what they actually want to draw. And also that she feels like she's kind of collecting art. She's rather than commission them and having a hand in the process she's like curating a museum on her body which is also such a cool way to think about it and then it gets me into thinking like how underutilized skills are all over the world and not only that I, I wish garment workers were being paid more but that they actually maybe got a hand in what they were making and some choices and some agency and like how would the world look if everybody who made clothes like the people who designed the clothes made the clothes <laughs> 
and you got to have some kind of interaction with them using the internet or even just in person like what is it like to live in a world like that i don't know but i'm excited to find out and, and while i do feel negative about the future a lot of the time when I sit down and think, frankly, for a little bit too long <laughs> about our relationship to tattoos, it just makes me think like not only are we capable of thinking in a different way, we kind of already do. Isn't that really freaking weird? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're curious about my thoughts about the idea of affordable fashion uh, and that kind of thing, I have a video up here about that. It's called Elijah Told About Spending and the subtitle is That's Not Affordable. Um, so do go and watch that if you want to hear more of my nuanced thoughts about that because I understand that not everybody can afford things and that is not on the people, it's on the shit economy. But I do think it's interesting what we decide we can afford and what we decide is too much to pay somebody. The economies of scale in our own personal lives and how many things we think we need rather than using all that money to just buy like one thing and make sure everybody who made the thing was having a good time. I very rarely and really try to avoid taking sponsors on this channel. And the reason I'm able to do that is because of the support of the Gumption Club. They tip me per video to make sure these weird thought experiments <laughs> keep being uploaded to the internet for you to watch for free. So if you're interested in joining the Gumption Club, you can do that below. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts on tattoos and fast fashion in the comments. And also just tell me if you have a tattoo and what it means and why you like it. I just want to know. I'm just so nosy. Frogs not out.